This is the tried and true 7,500 watt putt-putt generator that we use all too often in the film industry and you're using it all wrong, or at least you're not using it to its full potential. You see that? 120 slash 240. I don't know why we deliberately choose to ignore 240 volts in the film industry in North America. There's only one 240 volt standard and that is 100 amp baits. Don't you think that there's room for maybe a lower amperage 240 volt standard, especially because most of our lights can run on 240 volts and they run more efficiently, you can do longer runs. There's all sorts of benefits to 240 volts. The buck stops here. We're building a 240 volt distro box to run with this generator. Come on, let's do it. This is gonna be the basis of our distro box. These are these super nice cast aluminum boxes from a place called Bud Industries. You can just buy these on Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive. They're super, super durable. And I just love that even if you don't paint it or anything, they look really, really cool. So we're gonna start off by blowing some holes in the face of this for all of our outlets and everything like that. I've had this problem before. You can never just work on a project. You always gotta like work on the project to get your tools to work on the project. That, that's the fix. Okay, now we can cut. All right, that's what we're looking for. Yo, that one came out really, really good. All right, so the next design consideration is probably one of the most important, and that is how are we going to be feeding power into these? So the whole entire idea is that we're gonna have dual voltages. We're gonna have 120 volts to a normal, you know, a couple of duplexes here. And then we're gonna have 240 volts, 20 amp over here on this side. So the normal way that you get power out of one of these generators, you know, in the film industry is with 60 amp baits. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I hate baits. Bait sucks. It is like the Phoenix connector of distro. It's horrible. I hate it. They get warm, they stick together. They don't stick together. It's just like, it is the worst standard. And there's way, way better standards. And the biggest problem with baits, and the reason why we're not gonna be able to use baits on this is there's only three conductors. We need four. With dual voltages, you need your ground, of course. You need common, and you need two hots, not just one. What's a good connector for that? Sakopex. This is 19 pin Sakopex. Normally you would find this uh, maybe feeding space lights in a stage, old tungsten rigs and stuff like that. Uh, because of the multiple pins, you can have multiple circuits on one single thick ass connector. The way that we're going to use it is by segmenting the pins so that, you know, three or four pins will be a hot, three or four pins will be a ground, three or four pins, you know, that type of thing. And these are all 12 gauge pins. You can run 20 amps through each of these pins, which is pretty impressive. And that's gonna mean that this kind of new dual voltage standard that I'm building for this is actually gonna be good for like almost 100 amps, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Another reason why I absolutely love these cast aluminum project boxes is they're just like super easy to work with. It's like, it's like cutting through butter, you know? The, the cast aluminum is just, it's just easy. It makes sense why these are made to be project boxes, especially for like electrical projects like this. So we're gonna start off by popping in our 520 amp breakers. These are panel mount breakers. And then we got our standard Edison there. Those are 20 amp Edison outlets. And then for our 240 volt, 20 amp standard i am opting to use true one power con these are already tried and true they're used a lot in our industry already and you know inversely to the nema 240 volt standard that can be easily kicked out these are locking they're weatherproof and in every single situation in this project that's the type of connector i'm trying to use i want it to be locking and i want it to be weatherproof Moving on to the Sakopex, it was quite the chore to get these things soldered. Those big 12 gauge pins are actually, they suck a lot of heat out of the soldering iron, but luckily I was able to get it done. And that was really our starting point to start getting the box wired up because this is gonna be the power in and the power out. So I was trying to really figure out a uh, efficient power flow inside of this 
that could be very organized and make sure that I have enough room. Because it's the thing with these distro boxes. Distro boxes are really, really big. And it's not because of you know the different outlets and stuff like that. It's all of the different electrical pathways and stuff that you actually have inside of the box. You got to make sure you have enough room to get all of this cable moving, especially because the standard that I'm, I'm basically establishing with this Saco is each hot in common has five different 12 gauge cables. That's what gives us the 100 amp of capacity. Really, it's 100 amp single phase. It's two different legs of 100 amp, which is pretty cool. The ground is downgraded to just four 12 gauge cables or four 12 gauge pins, which is acceptable because in a best case scenario, the ground is not under any load. So the strategy is using these big burly 250 amp bus bars to be able to connect the power in on one side, power out on the other side, and in between leaving a bunch of different spaces for me to, be able to just connect up all of these cables using some simple crimp on lugs. And then to connect to the actual breakers and outlets and receptacles and stuff like that, I can use some of these push on spade connectors that also were crimp on. So I was able to just like lock in and just crimp and freaking burn in some heat shrink. And that was a job well done. I think it came out pretty dang clean. Oh my God, look at this thing go. Oh, that's a beautiful box. Now the next design consideration is one of the most important, the way that the user is going to interact with the box. It's also gonna be one of the most recognizable parts of this box. So I started by popping some of these rib nuts in here and these are the mounting holes for the handles. So I decided to do these really, really cool handles. These are aluminum powder coated handles with some 3D printed connectors that I made. Looks like it's out of dang Ghostbusters or something. I love it. That is our completed 240, 120, Volt Sakopex driven distro box. Let me take you through how it all works. So we're gonna start over here at the generator. Now, a lot of people modify their generators. They throw 60 amp, you know, into it. They cut it up and do all this kind of stuff. I didn't see any reason to do that because on this power horse generator, which I kind of like better than the Hondas, I'm gonna tell you, it comes with a 50 amp uh, NEMA plug. I can't remember what this is, but it is a 240 slash 120 volt plug. You got your hot, hot, common, and ground. So I'm able to just plug that in like, <laughs> I'm gonna plug it in like that. And then I was able to run this down and I made a nice 3D printed housing for our Saco connection. You can barely see it, but right here next to the ground, so you don't need to do all this stupid strain relief that we normally do with 60 amp coming out in a very elegant, beautiful way is hooked there, our Jenny distro uh, hookup. The other reason why I really, really love Saco is the accessories. This is a Saco Pex splitter. One of the most beautifully elegant splitters that I've ever freaking seen. And the thing that's really, really cool about this and the way that this is all mounted up, I can take this splitter and I can just mount it right to the generator. So right out of the generator, I have two outputs. I, what, what more do you want? Like that's a, that is a beautiful, beautiful accessory to the whole entire system. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and grab our 50 foot Saco. Get this bad boy connected up. These are weatherproof connections. I actually believe that they're IP rated, which is pretty freaking awesome. So you don't have to worry about these in the rain, which is really, really freaking nice. With any kind of electrical connector over time, when they're heating up, heat cool, heat cool, they get crud in them, stuff like that. A lot of times, especially with baits, it's almost impossible to pry them apart from each other. One really, really great attribute to Sako is the fact that, watch this, when I loosen this, it's actually gonna start pushing that connector out. The connector itself is designed to push itself apart. So over time, this is gonna last a lot better, be a lot easier to work with. Now, we could stab right into this just like you would a regular lunch box, but I want you to think about this box much like you would maybe like how you'd use a 600 amp box because with doubling the voltage, you get a lot more power that you can push through this dang thing. We have this super cool off the shelf PowerCon distro box. You feed it with one PowerCon, it gives you five. It's like a mega cube tap. A rectangle tap, if you will, rectangular prism tap. Now, why does this exist? Because uh, 
Europe is way ahead of us and the live event industry is way ahead of us. And they all use True One uh, way more than we do uh, at 240 volt, as well as I think, you know, North American live event probably uses this as a, at 120 as well. But that's the thing that's beautiful. You don't have to build your own box like I did with that one. You can just buy this for relatively cheap. What I'm talking about, think of this more like you would a 600 amp box. Think of this more like your lunch box. So that's gonna go in between our new 100 amp distro and our light. And how are we gonna do that? We have this beautiful stack of 240 volt stingers that Chris built for us. So these beautiful locking connectors that I keep on raving about. I'm gonna go ahead and stab right into our box there. And stab into our little rectangular prism tap. And now we need to make the jump from this to this. How will we do that, you wonder? The aperture power cable is our stupid old connector. Wait a second, that looks familiar. Yeah, that's right. The standard connector that comes on here is True One PowerCon. We don't even need this. We can just grab another one of our brand new 25 foot stingers right into our box. You ready for that magic trick? I can take this and plug these connectors right in to pretty much all of the aperture lights and a ton of other lights, cream source. Um, I'm sure maybe Nanlite might have it. There's a ton of manufacturers that already use True One. Honestly, it's an incredible standard. I think it's time we crank up this Jenny and see if this works. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I freaking love it. Oh my gosh, dude. All weatherproof locking connectors all the way down. Y'all, I am freaking proud of this. I'm busting into the edit to show one addition that I did, which is these awesome voltage, amperage, and uh, frequency displays that are per circuit. So yes, you're gonna go see exactly what voltage each circuit is, as well as what load is on each circuit. Why do not all distro boxes tell you what load is on each circuit? Why, why is this the first time I've ever seen this? I'm sure people have done it, they, you had to. This is just too simple and obvious of an idea, but the freaking dual voltage boxes got it. I'm so freaking hyped on this. I know, I know what's gonna happen already. I freaking know what's gonna happen. This is gonna be a very divisive subject. I know you crusty, jaded old heads are gonna get in the comment section and say, like, man, man, grab that 60 amp. It all works, it's been working for a long time. Why, why are you trying to, trying to fix what ain't broken? You know what, the way that we make movies is, 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 is evolving, it's different. Look, look at these freaking lights, these small, lightweight LED lights. This ain't an HMI, this ain't a tungsten. We're in a new era, so why can't the distro evolve? Okay, if you're still confused why I'm making such a big deal out of low amperage, 240 volts, this is gonna make it make sense. A 120 volt, 20 amp circuit is good for maximum 2,400 watts. Granted, we normally, you know, you kind of call it about 2,000 watts. Double the voltage, you double the wattage. So this one stinger at 240 volts is good for 48 100 watts. One stinger, I can run three of these. That's insane to me. This is your new 60 amp. This stinger is your new 60 amp. Would you rather hump this or 60 amp cable? I would rather hump that every single day. I'm gonna much rather disconnect this easily disconnectable Socopex then I will 100 amp baits has been cooking for hours and hours and hours. This is an evolution. This is honestly the future. Like this is, I don't see myself ever powering my set any other way. This is it. So guys, freaking jump in the comments right now. I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Good, the bad, the ugly. I wanna hear it all. What else could we build into this? What did I, you know, obviously miss? I'm just one man. If we, can, if we can get the, the brain trust of everybody in GE together, we could probably evolve this to be a really, really dope system. I'm gonna say, I think it's in a pretty good spot right now, but just let me know what you say. You can call me stupid or whatever, you can call me a genius, you know, whichever way is completely fine. 
But I think I'm onto something here and I'm super hyped about this. So if you had fun with this project at all, freaking subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna try to do more of these projects as often as I can. Um, and you know, follow me on Instagram and stuff like that. Obviously I do a ton of, ton of stuff there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, dude, freaking fun, chilling with you guys, building some new distro. Let me know what you think. Share this video if you like it, you know, all that stuff. All right, peace.